The late Dan Seals, this great crossover hit called Bop at KSMO Radio 1340. And it is time for our final group of FFA students to come in on FFA Day here on KSMO Radio. Mr. Bob Parsons has the mic. Mike, Mr. Bob. All right, thank you, Stan. Yes, this is our seventh and final group today here on FFA Day on KSMO. And, of course, they've already said that they're going to be the best group I've had all day. So we'll uh, – jury's out on that. We'll wait and see, but I'm sure they'll do a fine job. Whether the best on – every group today has done a really good job. And, I, you know, lots of reasons. Uh, one of them is, of course, the good training they've had uh, as they've worked their way through ag education and FFA. The other is these folks, they all come from good seed stock. Some of you don't know what that means, but they do. They have good parentage, if you would prefer I put it that way. I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves, tell, um, tell who their fa uh, family is, their parents, and what grade they are in school, and then we'll start delving into some uh, other questions. I don't care which side of the, the uh, L we start on here, but whoever wants to. Colson, I, I, I should introduce all of them. Let me do that first. We've got Colson C., Caden Manthe. Wyatt Lundy, uh, Jody Dean, almost Jody almost got tripped up there, and Nathan Faulkner. Hey, I got everybody's. Now, you might think they're laughing at me the way I did that. That's not as easy for an old person as you might think. Uh, anyway, enough of that. Introduce yourself, a little bit about your family, your grade in school, that kind of information, please. Hello, my name is Colson C., and I'm currently a junior at Salem High School, and I'm the son of Tiffany McNamee and AJC. Uh, my name is Caden Manthe. My parents are Jeff and Shandy Manthe, and I am a senior in Salem High School. Hi, I'm Wyatt Lundy. My parents are Ronnie and Melissa Lundy, and I'm a senior at Salem High School. My name is Jody Dean, and my parents are Ross and Jill Dean, and I'm currently a junior at Salem High School. My name is Nathan Faulkner, and my parents are Chrissy and Travis Faulkner, and I'm a senior at... Are you a senior already? Yeah. Well, I could say that to all these seniors. And juniors don't have much time left, that's for sure. Uh, all right, you've done an excellent job introducing yourselves. Uh, well, let me... Uh, start off with what I've started off with every group because it's kind of the easiest way and if you've done if you're doing this for the first time like one of our quintet here is this their first time to do this so what I've never done this before. you had it no. Jody I, well I thought you had okay <laughs> well Caden you're not by yourself then no. as a rookie doing uh, the FFA I program with us, my sophomore year. I guess not well, I'm glad you got the op both of you got the opportunity to do this. Um, I would like for you to share with our listeners what you have found to be what we would call your favorite FFA activity uh, since you've been in ag education. So, whoever wants to go first, there's I know you're not going to fight over it. They'll kind of point at one another. You know, it's your turn. It's my turn. That kind of deal. So anyway, Colson, you're going first. Yes, definitely my favorite FFA memory was attending a leadership conference in Washington, D.C. It was a week-long conference where you'd go through different leadership activities while you're getting to Site C, Washington, D.C. So I definitely brought a lot home from that that I get to implement in my chapter and area. So I would definitely claim that as my favorite memory. And that's uh, a real small percentage of FFA members get to participate in that and particularly a, a small percentage of Salem chapter, considerable financial expenditure, uh, considerable expenditure of time just to get ready to go to make the uh, necessary funds to finance the trip and that type of thing. So that, that is a special, special uh, FFA activity. All right, someone else. Jody? Um, my favorite memory in FFA would be the chapter beef days that we do. This was kind of my first year to be able to actually lead a station with my equine, and that's my passion, so it was very easy for me. And I just love seeing those those third graders with the smiles on their faces and being able to ask them questions. And when they found out they got to come up and pet the horse and pet my donkey, that thrilled them, and I just love doing that hands-on things with them. Um, and something individually in FFA that I've done that was extraordinary for me was when I went to state for my FFA equine speech. I didn't even, I had no idea what I was doing when I went into this. 
and I didn't think I would make it that far at all. And when I got out of districts and got to go to state and talk to all those different FFA members and be able to present like that, I think it just really got me out of my comfort zone for future FFA activities, and that's just something I'll always remember because equine was my passion. And life in general because it's, uh, it really has helped expand, I'm sure, expand your communication skills. And, and your being able comfort. to talk to all of those other FFA members and their views on the industry was pretty Absolutely. amazing. And we congratulate you on your accomplishment with that last year. I know you did very, very well. Uh, it's great. Okay, somebody else. All right. Kate? I guess my uh, favorite FFA memory would have to be, I guess, beef days right along with Jody. Not that I was leading but I had the the chance to help the third graders go through all their stations and help explain what everything was and how it worked or you know if they needed to go somewhere do something just help them good and it's it is a neat active in lots of respects now I've mentioned about every time that that's come up with today because we may have different listeners this hour with this group than we've had in other hours but I if I may be mistaken on this, but the last I knew, that was the first activity that all the third graders in Dent County that are in class that day. You know, there might be some out sick that day, but all of them that are in class in those five schools that day, that's the first time they come together for any activity within the county. So it's kind of a very important activity. And then you get to do things like Jody described with the bringing your animals or uh, leading groups around like Caden has described. You just got lots of opportunities. All right, we still got a couple of you yet to share your favorite activities. Uh, my favorite FFA activity would be uh, UMC Field Day where you go around learn about different uh, departments of agriculture. Uh, there's one that teaches uh, about drones and how you can use them for uh, crop farming and uh, watching your crops and or uh, checking cattle with them. I see uh, in the future, and Nathan brought that up. I think that's a neat one. I see a lot of people using drone technology in terms of checking, yeah, you know, checking livestock. Uh, I think it's a very applicable uh, place for for drone technology. All right, Mr. Lundy, we're down to you. I guess I'm last. Yeah, just uh, on this. One of my favorite things probably be what Nathan said. Um, there are many different people there uh, telling you things that most people probably didn't know. So it's kind of cool to learn all those different things. There are a lot of different things, and several of the groups today have mentioned some of the different things. You all, uh, that's the first time anybody mentioned the drones, Nathan, which I, I'm real glad you did. Uh, somebody, every group always mentions the uh, fistulated cow, the cow that you get to put a sleeve on and stick your hand in. Did you do that, Manthe? Yes, I did. Well, I'll be, I'm proud of you. Probably a lot of folks just shy away from that. They think, oh, no, nasty old cow contents. It it's, it's gross, but you got to do it. Yeah, there you go. Good way to approach it, you bet you. All right, that's some of our favorite activities. What have you found most difficult as you in ag education at FFA? What's been your biggest challenge? Whoever wants to go first can. It's, we're not here. Uh, there's not a certain rotation, that's what I'm trying to say. You leading the Colson? Yes. Go there are definitely several challenges that you will face in agricultural education. And one of the newest and the biggest ones I faced most recently was last year I showed an expo steer for the first time. And I would never done it before and I would never been around that sort of thing. So it was definitely a new experience that brought tons of new challenges I would never faced before. And it just, it shows you, it's just a small example of all the hard work you'll put into the agricultural field. But it is also one of the most rewarding. So that was definitely one of the most challenging and then you also have your record books if you don't stay on your records the best <laughs> and they all nod in agreement yeah the record books are a, uh well they're a necessary evil you know what that means it is terrible they're terrible you have to do them but you have to do them you don't have any choice you're going to be keeping records the rest of your life whatever occupation not too many of you are going to go off in the woods and be hermits and not have any contact with any other human beings now uh, that's about the only way you'll get out of some record keep. Manthe says he's contemplating that <laughs> as his career goal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, someone else. Jody? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges for me was last year when I decided to run for an office. I had definitely not planned on it, and I had some people kind of encourage me and uh, taught me into doing that. I'm involved in 
a ton of stuff at school, and I never really considered an office because I'm like, well, I don't know if I can dedicate myself to FFA, and I feel like if I'm going to be an officer, I need to dedicate myself, and I need to give my time to that more than anything else. But I'm really glad that I did. It's allowed me to get more involved than I could have ever imagined and knowing this is something that I want to do in the future. And another challenge was when I went to national convention this year. I'm not one of those kids that want to leave home or get away from my parents. People ask me, Jody, where are you going to go to college? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't want to leave home. <laughs> um, so that was a challenge for me, but it, it helped me so much to just be able to get away from home for four days and talk to students from my school and be able to just get more outgoing. Well, I tell you, the folks are honest with themselves and honest when they're talking about it. There's a lot of folks that don't want to leave home, and I'm talking from personal experience. I would love to stay on that home farm and farm for the rest of my life. But that wasn't what was uh, in the great plan for me, obviously, after coming down here and spending uh, parts of five decades in Dent County. So, in fact, nearly all of them. All right, somebody else with their – oh, and one other thing, and we're going to have Caden go next. One other thing, though, that Jody alluded to there that really I think is important to uh, – important learning experience for kids that do get involved in ag education, FFA, is you do have to learn to balance the different aspects of, of life that you're involved in. Uh, we have a, several – I know Colson played football. Um, maybe others of you here that played football that I'm not aware of it. Anyway – no, Jody didn't, right? Jody <laughs> could have been a kicker, uh, but it, you do have to balance everything uh, with those other activities that you're involved in, and uh, some of them have to take more, a lot more time than others. All right, other activities, challenges that you found, Caden? Uh, I would have to say probably the ag mechanics contest team. Me and Wyatt did. We were on the team last year, and it was. It was just different. I wanted to try it, you know, going into it. I, you know, just thought that it was going to be like welding, just torching things, brazing. But it's way more than that, you know. It's all about, every, you know, everything, calculating acreage, gluing pipe, just a lot of different things. And I didn't think that it would be that until then. It's just really opened up my eyes. Good. I, and you've hit on a really important point. I think that's probably the toughest contest that there is. Uh, because it does involve so many different aspects uh, of mechanic. It's basically you're learning, you're doing a mechanical engineering task, and and it's tough. It's a tough one. I we never were able to train a very good ag mechanics team. I'll be Still honest can't. with you. It's, it's, uh, it's hard. just it, it is it is. Well, it, you can't do it in a couple of months commitment. It's a, it's a year's commitment at minimum in advance to get ready for that particular contest, I sincerely believe. I'm still learning stuff on it. It's, it's hard. But another thing it's done for you, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's probably sparked some interest in some other areas uh, of mechanics that you really didn't think about before you started doing that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. What else have you found? Nathan? I'll go next. Okay, why? Go ahead. Uh, well, like Caden said, uh, we both did ag mechanics last year, and it was probably one of the hardest things that I've done for FFA. Um, there's so much that you need to know that you thought you knew before, but you come to find out that you didn't really know as much as you thought you did. But uh, it's it's more than what you think. It's just a little bit of everything that you have to learn. Quite a detail, very contest. It sure is. Yeah. yeah. Good point. All right. Probably the hardest thing I've ever done in FFA. Uh, I do livestock judging, but I the only thing I really know about judging livestock is cattle. I grew up on a cattle farm, but like judging sheep and hogs, I can kind of judge hogs, but sheep, I don't know anything about them. And to do good, in, you kind of have to know a little bit about every species yeah. of livestock. You do, and even I think they're getting some goat judging in that as well. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah. And the other thing about it, uh, some of the students have mentioned some other contest teams, and I, I point out that the thing about livestock judging in particular, and even equine for, to an extent, there's a lot of what the personal opinion of the judge and how that matches up with your opinion too on things like that. So uh, let's deal with uh what contest you've already dealt pretty well with what contest teams you've done anybody else done anything on any other contest teams 
Go ahead. Cool. I've done a lot of different contest teams. I've done anywhere from soil judging to job interview. Then I've also thrown in a few public speaking events in there as well. And last year, I actually double qualified for state in both job interview and ag sales. So I got second at the district level last year in job interview, and we our team took second place as a whole at the district level for ag sales. And once we moved on to state, I got a gold rating at state in ag sales, and that's the highest rating you can receive for the group. Congratulations, because those are few and far between, it seems like, for for uh, real rounded programs, unless you really spend a lot of super time. Uh, yeah, I could go farther, but I won't. I'll just stop right there. All right, anybody else? Anything else? Jody? Um, well, last year was my first year to compete on a contest team, and I was on the ag sales team with Colson and Dalton Sanders, um, and we did go to state on that. That was in a, quite an experience. Um, this year I plan on doing horse judging, Mm -hmm. um, especially since that's something I'm interested in. But I've been practicing, and like you said, with judges' opinions and your opinions, I've noticed I ain't doing so great at this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't agree with that, but okay. So I've got to work on that. And I'm not – don't take this wrong, but sometimes our backgrounds just – we have certain images ideas, yes. and <laughs> ideas, and, and those don't match up with a judge. Uh, I remember earlier today – uh, Nathan Williams was talking about doing horse selection and had no experience with horses whatsoever, and he didn't do too bad with it at all. Uh, well, he was just a, a clean slate, and so as he was trained, he was trained pretty well to match up what a lot of the judges that come in to judge uh, equine CDEs for FFA, uh, what their kind of their thinking was. So, yeah, the, you run into those difficulties of getting the that all to match up. So sometimes cut and dried things like a subject matter test uh, are a little clear, but they are also all the competition really narrows up to on those particular events. What else on anything else on career development events? Nope. Okay. Good job. Y'all have worked that pretty well. Um, now I get to this point in time, sometimes I have to say, now have I asked you yet to tell what your SAE is? I haven't. No. All right. I didn't think I had. I'm trying to stay on my exact checklist with this group just so uh, so I stay kind of in order. Uh, share with our listeners what uh, you have and even things that you've had in the past as part of your SAE, Supervised Agriculture Experience. And if, in case we've got someone new that's tuned in, purpose one of the purposes behind the SAE is, of course, uh, to give students a chance to apply some of what they're taught in the classroom in uh, away from home in that uh, uh, away from school in that home situation other things is responsibility uh, Colson mentioned showing a steer for the first time I'm sure he learned there was a bunch of responsibility he didn't know he was going to get into and why it kind of laughs because he's done steers before he knows what I'm referring to uh, tell us tell us about your experiences with your SAE and what your SAE has been We'll start wherever you want to. Colson got the nod again. Go ahead. So my SS or my SAE mainly consists of placement, which is working on many different job sites. Um, I work for the city of Salem, refereeing and ump umpiring several of the like youth recreational events, and then I also work for several different farmers around Dent County. But that the, my SAE also does not end there. I also have some in the ownership side. I do own my expo steer for the expo, and I sell that at expo. Okay. Next. They're looking towards Caden, so I guess it's either Caden or Nathan. Uh, they got the mics. My SAE, I guess, is kind of the same as Colson's. Not really, though. But mine is based on more of the placement. I work at, you know, a lot of farmers around this area, uh, Jadwin Canoe Rental and Mercer Excavating. And then I do have dogs, and then around the expo time, I do raise pigs. Okay. Uh, quite a variety to these SAs that we've heard about so far. That's good. Go ahead. Uh, for my SA, I have uh, a sheep, uh, a cow, and then, like Caden, I have dogs. And then, uh, just like about everybody that you probably had in here, I have just a job on a farm, too. So. A lot of folks... Uh, a lot of students in Salem are, uh, do have the uh, placement essays as involved. Well. Many years ago, we really started putting emphasis on that because, well, one thing, uh, almost every high school student does some work somewhere. 
and particularly if you live it. So we wound up with some students that maybe didn't have the opportunity to have a cow or a hog, which were the old traditional essays, but they could do some placement work. And even a number of students uh, were utilizing unpaid hours, just doing chores for folks. Maybe a neighbor's gone and you have to do some chores for them, take care of their animals while they're gone. Maybe you get some pay for it, maybe you don't. But that's kind of the, the way that's uh, worked out. We put emphasis on that a long, long time ago. And I think it's, it's paid off in terms of number of students that are able to get into the ag education program now, but also in terms of the economy because uh, it has generated lots and lots of dollars. Uh, we used to have a figure actually on that total dollars generated from the SAEs of the high school students here at Salem High School, and it was uh, six figures, that, and that was the net after expenses were taken off of their ownership enterprises. So it is a vital part uh, of uh, the SAEs of Salem High School students. All right, Jody, your turn. Um, my ownership SAE is raising and selling ABCA registered border collies um, and also equine. We bought a stud not too long back, and we are expecting foals this upcoming spring and summer, so I'll be able to get into that SAE more, raising those foals and kind of getting one of my own again. Mm -hmm. um, and occasionally I work for my grandpa Bill at his big barn flea market and help him with that any way I can. Very good. All right. Nathan, we're, we're to you. Well, for my SAE on the ownership side of things, I got uh, I have four uh, cows, uh, three of them being registered Herefords, and then I have a show steer and some coon dogs. And then on placement side, I work for Brandon Barton feeding hay for his cattle, and uh, I work at the Salem Livestock Auction, and uh, I work out at the lodge down at Montauk. Okay. Quite a variety, again, of uh, different uh, involvements for their SAEs. So these guys all have excellent ones. Very good. Have we talked about your future plans? Nope. Not quite. Not quite. All right. Future plans. Yet in high school, which isn't much left for senior, uh, and yet uh, what you got planned for yet in high school and then after high school. So wherever we want to start. Go ahead, Colson. They keep leaning towards Colson to start the ball rolling, so go. So I guess I have some short-term plans and some long-term plans. My short-term for now, including area officer interviews, which are in the next two weeks. I'm currently the area parliamentarian, so I will be running. I'll be up again to run for office in a week and a half. So I hope to be getting a higher office up in the area 13. And then for my long-term plans, I plan on attending a four-year university and pursuing a degree in animal science. And if I'm not quite burnt out on school, I can see vet school in my future. All right, very good. You going next, Caden? Yeah. Caden? I, right. guess, I guess a short-term and a long-term goal at this point for me would just hopefully go to uh, Lynn Tech in the fall for their welding program. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to go to college. That's about it. That's all right, Wyatt. <laughs> I, I shared with some of the groups earlier today that asked about how I got involved in ag education. I said, well, I left home with the farm I wanted to stay on, Jody. Uh, left home and went off to college to major in, ag in education, not in agriculture education. And it just, over time, that's what fell in place. So it'll, you'll find it. Just having that goal to go to college, that's step one. Jody? Um, well, so far I'm thinking obviously going to college. Like I said, I'm not sure where. Um, agribusiness is kind of where I'm heading. Business you use in everyday life. You can't go wrong with that. Um, I went up to National Convention this year and we got to talk to a lot of young ladies in agriculture and marketing. That would be mm -hmm. a great thing to get into agricultural marketing, working for these companies. That's something I've also um, kind of thought about. Referring back to Colson, um, maybe becoming a vet. I used to want to become a vet, um, and then my mom worked for the vet's clinic, and I had to see what she had to deal with, and I decided that even though I love animals, that's definitely not for me. There's, um, there's downside to it. And a lot there? of people think I'd be a good teacher. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so got goals, lots of them, <laughs> but that's a direction, having, uh, having those different interests and then figuring out which one you really want to pursue. All right, we're to Nathan. Well, my long-term plan is to uh, go to either OTC or Lintech or MWI to get a degree in welding and pursue a career in that field. 
and then maybe go back to uh, some tech school to learn a different trade and to, so I can be a jack of more than one trade. Okay. Well, that that makes you more employable yeah. the more skills you've got, obviously. So that, that works. How has uh, Ag Ed and FFA helped you with towards those goals? Hmm. And I'm not sure I've asked that of any other group today. So has FFA and Ag Ed helped you? Maybe it hasn't, but if it has, how has that helped you towards making a decision about those goals? Jody? Um, well, I'm, I've really, like I said, I went to national convention. Being able to talk to people in the industry and being able to go to things like that and all these conferences that we may go to and all the speakers they may have that's involved in just all kinds of things in the industry. It's amazing on everything that can, that's in this industry that you can do. Um, I had asked Mrs. Johnson a question for, I'm in your book, and I would asked her a question for the FFA page. What makes FFA an adventure? And she had stated all of the occupations that you can get into. And if you step out of your comfort zone in this program, you can discover so many options for your life. You can become a nurse, a welder, a teacher. It doesn't matter. FFA will help you in any career that you want to be in. I just think that's really amazing. She's nailing it pretty good there, yeah, wasn't she, guys? Yeah. I'm sure somebody's got something to add, but uh, Jody did an excellent job of addressing that. No, no, I want to try to follow that up. I don't know if I can <laughs> top that one, but no, I can uh, add my input on my own. There you go. <laughs> All right. One thing I definitely did not, um, I guess, since I've been enrolled in ag education, one thing I really didn't know before that was what I want to do with my life. Um, kind of going through middle school, I was just like, eh, just kind of flying through, going through my classes, doing all the classwork, but I was never really interested in anything I was learning. And not until I got into my freshman Ag Science 1 class, I started like having interest in going to school, having interest in what um, the teachers were teaching me. And just one thing Ag Education has taught me is just what I want to do with my life. Before that, I didn't really know what I wanted to do post high school, but now I know I want to be in an agricultural field. And just before that, I just never really found, like, what my calling was for after. But now I've realized definitely animal science is where I want to head. And, you know, you guys, those comments that Jody and Colson made have kind of helped me transition into really about the last topic. Caden, you got something you want to add along that line? <laughs> okay. That's, that's fine if you do. But uh, why did you decide to enroll in ag education? and become an FFA member. What prompted you to make that decision? Uh, you've heard Colson in particular say how it's really been so beneficial in him making a career decision for after high school. What, why did you get enrolled in ag education and become an FFA member? Well, for me, okay. uh, the reason I got into ag education, uh, I wanted to be an FFA. My older sisters and few of my aunts and uncles were in FFA and I wanted to be able to show a steer and in the expo and uh, uh, learn about or uh, learn more about the cattle industry and uh, how to help out the farm okay family tradition part yeah. of it okay somebody else one of the big reasons I really wanted to join FFA because when I was in third grade and I went to those beef days I saw the one booth I was most interested in was when they presented the FFA thing, and they let you try on their jacket, and they just – it was just one of those things. Actually, my year for um, me to go to Beef Days was actually my advisor's year. He was presenting the FFA. So just to show, he presented while he was in high school the FFA section. He is yeah. now currently my advisor was just how the time fell. And just he showed me something I wanted to be interested in and what I look forward to in high school. And another thing is I did want to show an expo steer, and I wasn't involved in 4-H, so I saw FFA as a way to do that. And I've just taken everything else out of it too. So it has been very beneficial to me. Interesting how the long-term effects of something that seems so simple as beef days, yet it's not. It has a lasting, uh, lasting impact and effect. Go ahead. Uh, I'd have to say my father was in FFA, so I guess it'd be a tradition thing. Mm -hmm. And then I did have some friends that, I guess, growing up, they were in 4-H, and then I wanted to be in 4-H, you know, right. I guess to be with my friends. So I did show a, a hog. I don't know how many years ago that was. but I did. Been a few. And that, 
that really helped me a lot. And a lot of students do transition from 4-H to FFA. That's just, it just happens. Wyatt or Jody, whoever wants to go next. Um, once again, mine's kind of a family tradition, grandpa, uncle, dad. Um, so I kind of felt like, you know, I'm in an agricultural environment. I feel like I need to be in this. Um, and now that I've gotten more involved in it, it's not that I need to be in it. I want to be in it. And I want my future to be in there. And then referring back to Colson and Beef Days, I guess that's a reason that Beef Days is one of my favorite events is that we are influencing the younger generation. And they will see, I want to do that when I get into high school. And I guess that's why I enjoy that so much. Yeah, who knows, eight years from now, what third grader that went through last fall may wind up sitting in ag, sitting right here. I think it'll be somebody different interviewing them eight years from now. I don't think I'm going to do this forever, but anyway. Wyatt, go ahead. Uh, well, as you know, it's kind of a family tradition for mm -hmm. 4-H and or FFA. And uh, when you grow up around animals since you were born, it's kind of natural to take an ag class. Yep, so. exactly. And I even... Wyatt's grandfather was a senior, junior senior the year I started, so he was one of my very first uh, students, and his sister was the first and I think only student I ever had that was the grandchild of one of my former students. I had lots of children of former students, but uh, that, I think she was the only grandchild. Why? Did you already answer it? Yeah. Yeah, my fault, not yours. This group has done well. I thought they would. Uh, they're the best group this hour, that's for sure. <laughs> and <laughs> some of them listen to what I just said. All the groups have been excellent. Uh, there's not such a thing as picking out one favorite over the others. Folks in Dent County in Salem have made this possible. Over 60 uh, businesses and individuals have sponsored the FFA Day on KSMO. We're going to close out with Colson. Uh, listing some of those uh, sponsors. Colson? Denton County Farm Supply, Salem Memorial District Hospital, Interstate Regional Stockyards, Mid Ozark Animal Health Center, Fidelity Communications, Intercounty Electric Cooperative, Your Community Health Center, MFA Agri Services, Farm Bureau Insurance Willie Strader Agent. All right. And with that, I thank these five individuals for an excellent job, and we're going to send it back to Stan. Stan? All right. Thank you, Bob, and a great job done by all today. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Bob Parsons, our former FFA advisor and our KSMO uh, board op for doing a great job today with our FFA day. And, of course, seven different groups in today and I think seven successful uh, interviews and discussions. So very, very good, and we hope you all enjoyed our FFA Day right here on KSMO Radio 1340 and online at KSMORadio.com. And if you missed any of those interviews, they should be streaming, should be up on our YouTube page here shortly, if they are not already, right here on KSMO Radio 1340 AM. I know we had a little computer glitch, I think, on the first group as uh, it did not start streaming immediately. It did finally come on, but we couldn't get the whole thing on. But we got most of it on, and so I do want to thank uh, everybody for joining us on KSMO's FFA Day. We'll get back into some regular programming here in just a little bit. But we do, again, want to thank Mr. Bob Parsons for his hosting of the FFA Day, all the students that came in and participated, as well as our FFA advisors, Heather Johnson, as well as Lane Howard, and our Salem R80 administration for allowing the students to leave school to come here to perform um, this informational get-together and day for the general public from our own Salem FFA chapter. So, again, a lot of big thank yous go out to a lot of different people who made this day possible here on KSML Radio. It is 2.30 on the nose in your information station. We're going to take a short break. We're going to come back. We're going to have a little bit of music for you. We've got... Uh, also coming up in the 3 o'clock hour, some, uh, a full look at our forecast. Uh, right now, though, it's just cloudy out there at 1340. If you are out and about, if I get a little bit of that east wind out there, that's a cool wind, man. I'm telling you what, 37, 38 degrees are right there on that bubble. But it feels like about 29 to 30 because of that east breeze, 92% the relative humidity. And we do have right now KSMO Radio. 
of pressure is going down 30.19 inches. Do want to remind you, stop by, see your friends at Country Mart for Libby's Corn Peas or Green Beans, 69 cents each a can. Also, they have in a deli bakery, fresh butter and egg rolls, a 12 count package for $2.99. And family pack ground chuck is $2.69 a pound. That's a Country Mart. You can save today by stopping by. Well, you can save every day when you stop by. They're open seven days a week. Country Mart here in Salem on Highway 3272 East. Right here in town. At KSMO Radio, they're here to help you save. Back with Styx and Eric Clapton and some Cat Stevens and some Commodores. All coming up, all here at KSMO Radio. More variety, less repetition. KSMO Salem.